Perfect. All right, welcome everyone. So today I'm just gonna give a quick brief overview on how to use OneNote. Um, OneNote is a pretty powerful note taking tool and it is for free that you can, it, it's for free also. You can uh, use it on both a uh, Mac or a PC or a uh, mobile device tablet such as an iPad or Android device there. Um, we have it installed by default on all of our uh, faculty and staff laptops and desktops that we deploy out. If you have a home computer, you can also download it for free from your respective operating systems app stores. With Windows 10, it comes by default, I believe. So without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into showing how the uh, program works and how you can be able to kind of make the most use out of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen for a second. All right. And I assume everyone can probably see my desktop, right? Looks like it's perfect. All righty. So what I'm going to do is I already have it installed on my system there. But like I mentioned, if you use like your respective operating systems app store, you can be able to download OneNote directly from that. So I'm going to go ahead and open up OneNote from here. And the user interface is very similar across the desktop version. So if you have Windows 10 and you're using OneNote, it's going to look very similar to what you see over here. Now, if you're using OneNote for the first time, it's going to have you sync up with your OneDrive account. So what I've done for this one is I've logged in, used my Office 365 account, which is going to be the same credentials that you use to log into Blackboard with. So you're going to use your SUNY Oswego email address and password in order to sync up with our SUNY Oswego instance of Office 365. That will allow you to be able to fully sync up your OneDrive notebook to the cloud as well. So you can be able to portably use it on different computers or even on a web browser as well, if you go to OneNote.com. So the first time you're opening up and you've signed in, you're probably gonna get a screen that's similar to this where you're gonna see pretty much just nothing at all. And it'll probably say you don't have any notebooks open or it's gonna have like a default notebook open. To start with a brand new notebook, you're gonna click this drop down box over here and then you're gonna click add notebook. Now, from a student perspective, well, first, let me just click new so I can create a new notebook here. You can change whatever color you want. Um, green's my favorite color. I like this version of green, if I'm being honest, so I'll just select that. Now, if, from a perspective of a student, I would like to create like a notebook that's kind of modeled after a class I'm gonna be taking. So for this example, I'm gonna pretend that I'm a student inside CSC 212. CSC 212 is Principles of Programming, a course that's typically taken by first year students in the computer science or software engineering course. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna label this 12 Principles of Programming. And then there's pretty much only going to be one option for this one, which is going to be the one drive hooked up to our instance as soon as we go. So after I've named it, I'm going to go ahead and click create. It's going to create the notebook and sync it with the cloud. And then that's going to create the notebook right here. So there's three components to the uh, OneNote interface. You have your notebook itself, which is going to be where you're going to like group all of your notes and sections. You have your sections right here, which is where you're going to subdivide all your pages for your notebook. And then you have your individual pages themselves on this side over here. And then this is the interface where you can be able to upload notes as well as work on like notation and all that stuff. Now, if I'm taking a course, for instance, with like say CSE 212, we'll pretend that there's 15 weeks worth of content here. So I would style this section here probably after like each subject content. So like this one will be like week one, like an intro. And then week two will be like, uh, let's say setting up Java, which is what long, long ago when we were uh, using that, that was what we were using for our language. And then like three would probably be like uh, loops and uh, I can spell right this morning <laughs> and so on and so forth. And then for week one, let's say I want to introduce like the course syllabus. Like if I want to like 
have information on like the course syllabus, like place that inside there. So I would call this page, let's just say syllabus. And then from here, usually what a lot of people will do is they like to go ahead and start like typing out their information for the syllabus. What OneNote lets you do is it will let you embed documents right inside like the actual note itself too. So that way you have it like ready to read. So what I'm gonna do is over here, I'm gonna go ahead and click insert and I'm gonna insert a printout. And I have an example syllabus, but this is from a different class that I took and it's inside a PDF format. So I'm gonna go ahead and click insert. And then just like that, it's going to insert the syllabus right directly, the PDF document right directly into the notes there. So I don't have to like keep digging around for it. It'll be just right there, ready to go. Now, let's say I wanted to like make some annotations or additional notes on here. There's many different things you can do in order to kind of like notate it. So what I'm going to do is click insert. So that way we can like see what options we have. Let's say I want to add a table right over to the right side, which will have like, say, office hours. Well, actually not so much the right side, but on the bottom. So I'll do like Monday, day, day, and then there'll be like 3 p.m., 5 p.m., 3 p.m. So like you can be able to add like a table right directly like within this subject area so you can like add information that's not already on like the syllabus. And then let's say I want to add another page that has like equations on there so i'll do like um, i'll just call this like. algorithm. So i'll go ahead and go to insert and then i'll click an equation. And then let's just say, uh, I'm trying to remember what the notation for it is. I believe you can do, uh, yep. So you can use latex notation inside here. So if you type, oh, whoops. So if you type in like the forward slash and then type in uh, like whatever the name that you use for your uh, equations are inside there, you can be able to type out like an equation inside here. So you can be able to kind of form up like a different type of equation inside one note from here and you can also put like arrows pointing to like different areas and you can just type out like different areas such as like if you start typing directly it'll automatically create the text box for you And you can also put in different symbols. So that way, if you want to like add like a remember for later type thing. So I'll do date. For example, you can be able to notate whatever else you want to add over to OneNote. And you can keep adding pages with different documents as well as like different drawings on there if you want to be able to add additional notes over to your notebook and it will automatically save as you go so over at the top right here you'll see this little cloud icon that will let you know if your page has been saved or if it's still syncing so it's kind of similar to google docs where as you work it'll automatically save for you and that's pretty much all I currently have. I just want to kind of give like a quick and dirty, like how to use OneNote for like the best of examples if you wanted to like reorganize your notes. So I'm open to any questions and I'm looking at the chat right now. Can you use it on iPads? Yes, Michelle, you can actually use it on iPads and it, it, I haven't used it too much before I've used it a little bit before just to kind of test it out there iPads and tablets have the added um, benefit of being able to also draw on there too so if you want to like freehand like a shape or like write out equations offhand without needing to like deal with notation then you're able to do that as well great I've been using notability or pre-pandemic I was using notability and uh, I just was this one might be a little better um, so I, I thought I would try it. So Joey 
asked inside the chat the difference between Google Drive and OneDrive in saving notes and documents. So in terms of functionality, there's not too much of a difference. I mean, the big difference between Google and OneDrive specifically is one's Google owned and the other is Microsoft owned. So you'll have to like keep in mind like which account you're using when it comes to syncing up your uh, notes and documents there. In terms of saving notes and documents, um, when it comes to using OneNote itself, OneNote is natively basically built into OneDrive. So it's with newer versions of OneNote, way back when OneNote was like a fledgling product, you could save it locally to the hard drive. But OneNote now has become such a service that it's basically tied into OneDrive for syncing. So it's pretty much cloud enabled and it, it can only pretty much sync up to like a OneDrive type account at that point. So it's in, in terms of that, it's basically whatever services actually authenticate off like either Google or Microsoft. And just to kind of circle back, OneDrive or OneNote is basically married at the hip to OneDrive for data syncing. So that's, hopefully that answers that question. Um, real quick, Daniel. Um, sure. If we do this, because I'm looking at it as easier to use than um, Drive for a class, and we have our students do work on it, and after they leave and graduate, do they lose that account, or do they now have to pay for it, or is it just loaded for us free? Is it a free account usually? So OneDrive or OneNote is kind of a little bit of a uh, gray area, but if a student or a staff member uses their Oswego.edu account to store their notes on OneDrive with, upon graduation, I believe that's going to be locked to their account, which means that I don't think they're going to be able to have access to it when they graduate. So in that sense, I reckon there is a way on OneDrive or OneNote where you can actually export that like OneNote notebook and transfer it over to a personal OneDrive account. So say for instance, like you're me and I've graduated from like SUNY Oswego and I have like a dtrong1990 at outlook.com account or dtrong at gmail.com account there. I can create a one a basic free OneDrive account that's I think goes up to like 15 gigabytes or something and be able to copy my notebook over to that afterwards. So that way I can be able to access it upon graduation. Excellent. Okay. Thanks. And to answer the first part of Judy's question a little bit more so that if you want to share materials with students, you're better off using Google products simply because they will all have Google accounts active and they may not all have activated a Microsoft account. Okay. Or if you want to do some collaborative work with students. Yeah, because I, I do a lot of design work with the students in their portfolio work. So that's why I was thinking. Thanks. I think for that, Google Drive would probably be a better application. Yeah. Maureen asks, are these notebooks easily shared with students? I use Google Drive heavily as a workspace in class with students, but I don't have each doc per class session aggregated. I would say, relatively speaking, it, it's somewhat easier because inside OneNote, you do have the option to share your OneNote notebook directly over to your students. Um, so there's like a share function at the top right, and you can directly email a link over to your students or copy a link and send it over, like post it on Blackboard so people can actually like access it. And there's another question. Can you import pictures? Example, if a student takes a picture of a prof's work on the board. Absolutely. You can definitely import pictures on there. And being a very multimedia person myself there, I highly encourage if anyone is like, if like, especially if you write equations on like a board, especially of like an algorithm or like it an equation there. I highly recommend taking a picture of it so that way you can be able to import into OneNote afterwards. All right. Any other questions? All right. This is one of those products also I'll just 
find like just to kind of close on this note where I definitely recommend playing around with it a bit just to see if you can derive like good value from it as well because I I told I tell you like when I first started off with one note it took me a while to kind of see like what like what the motivation is like why would I use this product and all that but I can tell you it's helped me quite a bit when it comes to like later on courses like just organizing all sorts of notes so that way it's kind of like easier to like kind of jump back in and sort by like week and stuff so definitely play around with it for sure you might get some good value out of it all righty so thanks everyone for coming over to this presentation and hopefully i inspire some ideas afterwards And 